Board Game Geeks Top 100 sometimes feels like random people voting random stuff. But we'll tell you how it should look like, and this is the way. By two random people from Latvia. <laughs> In this video, we're gonna re rank the Board Game Geeks Top 10 games. Ba -ba 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 -ba. There's 20 of them here. So we have a pool of 20 games, the top ever rated. These are the games from top 20. Starting from 1 to 10, from uh, 11 to 20 here. And we're gonna take these and then rank our top 10. And right after this video, we will get in touch with Born Game Geek, send them the list and everything should be in order right after this video. One of us will pick one game and just place it here. So if it's in the middle, it's kind of safe, right? It's kind of safe, but each of us gets one veto to throw a game out of top 10. Super easy, super simple. I'm gonna put Dune Imperium in the middle. I know you're not gonna veto it. I know it's gonna stay in here. Might be quite high, actually. Dune Imperium is a game in the Dune universe. The movies, all the hype now. And in this game, you play one of the houses trying to get control of Dune. AKA get 10 victory points or more. Well, this game is special because it's a worker placement where on your turns you can take workers, your agents, and place them on the board doing yeah. those actions. But it also is a deck building game. You have your own deck of cards that let you send your agents to the board and get all I. Oh! With Ow, you meant also it's a battling game? Yes! <laughs> Where you can send your troops to fight for rewards, tons of interaction, it's super fun. And that's one thing Top 10 has gotten correctly so far. It is a Top 10, it should stay in Top 10. I, I go with Terraforming Mars. I'll place it underneath the yeah, Good choice, good choice. Uh, yeah. Terraforming Mars is an engine builder where you are, well, Terraforming Mars. You play the game until Mars is habitable. And all players can make it habitable by playing cards and making all the environment feel nicer to us. You get a bunch of cards, you want to play a bunch of cards, but you can't play all of those cards, so which cards do you play? And then there's also a board where you place certain tiles and that gives you score and gives you points and lets you build up your engine and do more things. It's a crazy big, essentially a card game. In the game you will play more and more cards and these cards will produce more and more resources. And you can use these resources to buy even more cards and get more resources. Okay, my turn. You want something from this side? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna go to all that. Star Wars Rebellion is the original trilogy of Star Wars. At this point, there are so many, you might not know which one is the original, but it's the one starting from fourth episode. It's the pixelated one. <laughs> not that bad. They had patches, they've updated <laughs> graphics. But it's Star Wars in a box. One player plays the Empire, the other player plays the Rebellion. The Rebellion wins if it holds out long enough uh, without the Empire finding its base. The Empire wins if it finds the base and kills everybody. One versus one player game with a lot of conflict and going yep. at each other. The basic rules are actually quite simple, but the gameplay is deep and there's a lot of managing the areas and it feels totally asymmetric. The Empire has insane amount of everything and Rebellion has nothing, but you're going around sabotaging things and destroying and just hindering it and trying to bluff your way long enough so that the base isn't found. And even if it is, you can still try to escape and move to a different planet. Give me the obvious, the obvious one. one. Yeah. All right, uh, so like this, huh? No. Wait, wait, let me think about a veto then. Yeah, so it yeah. stays up here? Yeah. Hmm. Fine, I'll allow it for now. So Spirit Island is a cooperative game uh, where you all play spirits or gods of an island and invaders are coming in to ruin your uh, everyday life. As humans do. Humans sometimes yeah. can be sacks of uh, bad things. You win the game if you get rid of all the invaders and uh, you lose the game if the island is polluted too much. So in this game, each player has a hand of cards and you need resources to play those cards, but you're not gonna have enough resources for all of the cards. So which ones do you play? That give you something more for future turns or that immediately do something to invaders. I mean, it's a little bit of like damage control. There are some games in the world where after playing it, your mind feels like a fog. You know, you have been yeah. so intensely thinking about all the strategies and everything that you're just like, okay, I, I need some fresh air. Yeah. This is one of those games. You will struggle finding the right solutions, but it feels so satisfying when you do. Yes, yes, yes. Only space games for me. Now put it here. Oh, below Rebellion. Yes, yes. Uh, veto? Any vetoes? No, no, I like Eclipse. Eclipse is a Euro game 
ish yeah. in space with conflict. The goal of the game is to get the most victory points. And you get victory points for developing technologies, for winning combat against each other. Yes, I said it's a Euro game ish but it does have combat. And you get victory points for exploring space and building buildings. And on your turn, you're going to do one of the actions, like exploring, building, researching, and you can try to take as many actions as you want, but each time you place an action, your upkeep at the end of the round is gonna get more expensive. Can you afford to do those actions? Not as I play it. <laughs> I'm not too good at it. But a lot of the game is moving on the map, trying to control more territories and fighting each other. And that's a big part of it. Yeah, and it's also one of the most unique parts of this game, building your own sh ships. Because when you research new technology for your ships, you place it onto that ship and you can decide, okay, my ship is gonna have only rockets, but rockets fire only once. So if you don't kill the other guy, you're just sitting ducks there until he destroys you. Don't think I've seen that in any yeah, other unique. game. Yeah. Let's play this baby. We actually talked about Rebellion, kind of same feel game, uh -huh. just different IP on top of it. You as a light side play Frodo who wants to destroy the ring or you can also win if you gain different strongholds which is almost impossible yet that's a goal you ca could have and the shadow side wins if it uh, either corrupts Frodo or it destroys the strongholds which is very plausible. Yeah. Frodo really doesn't want to destroy the ring at the end. He's like you nah I'll go home. You chuck a bunch of dice and the results you roll will give you actions. You can use those actions to mostly play cards that will give you some powers or move armies or similar yeah. things. So, just pick. Below. He picked it, not me. I mean, this is a, doesn't have space. Pick a game. Fine, let's go. Twilight Struggle. Okay, first of all, can we agree this is number one? This is number one. Dune Imperium is number one and it might become number one. Now it gets tricky. <laughs> Fine, fine, I'll put, it I'll put it here then. I agree. So Twilight Struggle is a one versus one area control war game where one player plays United States of America and the other play USSR during the Cold War. It's a card driven game. What that means is you have a bunch of cards which you can play either for its points to do different kind of actions or for its event. That's it. You go back and forth trying to control different areas like Europe, Middle East, Asia, score points. There are different ways how the game can end. Somebody starts nuclear war, that player loses. Everyone loses, but that player especially loses. Oozing like historical flavor, it has a lot of conflict. So Ark now for me. Oof. Yeah, I'm gonna veto it. You're gonna veto it? Yeah, I'm gonna veto it. <laughs> wow. No Ark, no ah. <laughs> In super short, it's a Euro game where you build build zoo and you try to conserve the Earth. Similar to terraforming Mars where you play cards in front of you and there's build engines. ton of cards, yeah, yeah. And there's a great action selection system where you pick a card, do its action, and then they kind of all slide down. And the longer you don't do action, the better it becomes. And Yanis is saying that all of these are better than no, no. that one. Yeah, write down in the comments how bad did he mess up. I mean... No, really? No way. Come on. It's fine. I'd give it 7 out of 10. Twilight Imperium is this massive sci-fi game which takes the whole day to play. It's a whole event in itself. Um, I think it's the oldest game out of all of these. From all of these that's left, I think the one that I would love to play the most. I know I won't, most likely. You're playing this asymmetric race and uh, trying to get to 10 victory points. Yeah, first one to get 10 victory points wins. You build your own sci-fi army with spaceships and then a lot of fighting is going on. A lot of fighting. It's more about kind of managing conflicts than going into conflicts, if that makes sense. Because you always have like two neighbors and you can't fight both of them yep. and still try to win. It does have some issues and even the length is not the issue because sometimes you might be just essentially out of the game Early on, and just that like, is absolutely true. Since how from top twenty games, we're not that yeah, excited so, about them. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. I'm going to do this. It's a fine game. It's super boring. It just the same thing over and over. Because you finished it, you shouldn't again. have finished it. Mm. Ah, let's go. Let's fine, go. fine. Castles Burgundy. You have your own little board, 
where you're gonna be building different kind of buildings and they will give you either points or resources or both. The unique thing, it's a dice placement game. You have two dice, you can roll them and then you're gonna be placing them on the main board to get those buildings to build. That's essentially it. It's quite uh, simple. It's uh, one of the simplest games on this list. It's not, by uh, far the simplest Yeah, games. you can play this with non-gamers easily. Yeah. That's Castle Brigandy. It's nice, it's simple, better than Gloomhaven. I didn't say it. Did I say it? Uh, My last pick and you're not widowing it, so I no. can pick whatever. Which one you dislike the most? Hmm. 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 We're gonna have a clean board anyway, right? Yeah. Let's just start eliminating. Yeah. Will this go in? No. Okay. I'm also removing this one. This isn't making it. This is not making it. You should have done this slower. Like... <laughs> well, this is all out no. right? I'm, actually, that's a game that I'm considering giving Why? a replay. Yeah. Now that I have a cleaner collection, that video coming up soon, I'm considering uh, okay. replaying it. I... Remove Gaia Project. Yes, thank you. Now I don't care what you put in. Okay, remove Sight. Oh, wow, well, okay. And now people are going in the video. Pick through the ages or pick Great Western Trail. Pick Great Western Trail. Uh, through the ages goes to number ten. Okay. Through the Ages is a civilization game. Essentially, you build up your civilization to score a ton of victory points at the end by like uh, developing different technologies like space flight and internet and things yeah. like that. But you start out with like pyramids and yeah, yeah. before our time, and you play cards that uh, there are buildings or yeah, uh, characters that yeah. you would recognize, the ones on the cover or others. Yeah. It's massive. It's really, really big with great choices, and you really feel like you're building stuff. Definitely, yeah. You're building this stuff up to eight hours, I would say, six, eight. And a lot of people have turned to playing this on the mobile phones and app, actually. So yeah. that's something you could check out if uh, eight or six hours are uh, too troublesome for you. But this is the top 10 and I'm pretty happy with the order as well. I would move Spirit Island lower. But other than that, I'm fine. No, we're keeping it. So this is the top 10 rearranged. Bye. See you later. Bye-bye. No, no, well, where would you put it? Bye. <laughs> Obviously, every gamer is a different gamer, so your top 10 will look different than ours. Leave it down in the comments. All top 10 games you would put here from the pool we had. All right, don't cheat. Not picking out games like Nemesis or stuff like that. It's yeah. not in the top 20 yet. Wrongfully not in the top yes, 20. Yes, exactly.